Good afternoon. This is Ron Brown. It is uh, Friday, March 17th, 2023. Uh, this is uh, going to be a video about, uh, primarily about uh, HGSI today. It's in my series, Integrating HGSI with Thinkorswim. And today I'm going to uh, talk about swing trading setups with the undercut and rally scans. As usual, any stock index or ETF mentioned in this presentation is not a recommendation to buy or sell. All trading strategies are used at your own risk. Before I get into uh, the scans and HCSI, I just want to show you what kind of market we have. It's uh, 1.31 Central Time, hour and a half left. Uh, the uh, NASDAQ futures are now down 0.82% uh, or over 105 points after having a huge up day yesterday. This is a daily chart and I'll maximize this. You can see that there were one, two, three, four days coming off of this support line. And that support went back into this area. I should have extended that a bit. Um, I drew it off of uh, that bar right there. But there was also a test here and then a test here. And then it uh, started moving up. And uh, on Wednesday, it peaked its head up through this downtrend line. And then yesterday we had the big update. But notice that the big update yesterday did not have as much volume as the prior three days. So even with the wide candle, there just wasn't as much uh, energy behind that. And yesterday or today it opened here, traded up, and it came down. We're still, uh, the markets are still t uh, totally unsettled because of the uh, bank failures. And it's uh, very hard to predict uh, market direction at this point. I'll take a look at uh, this is the futures I've been showing you. And I've been showed that because uh, there's volume associated with it. With the composite, uh, there's no volume, as you can see. And uh, But here's the uh, trend line that's broken to the downside. And now it's dipped back inside of it today. Okay, I'll... Put this down to my original grid. Uh, same trend line is here on the weekly chart, the 78-minute chart, and the 16-minute chart. Now I'm going to uh, switch over to HGSI. I'll bring it up. And uh, I'm going to show you what we're going to be using. And before I get too far along, because the intraday data is updating in the background, I'm going to bring the industries up to date. All of these are industries. They're under the reference groups. Just go down here, go under the tools menu, and rebuild indexes in the group. And that's going to update all of the user groups so we can see where we are. This is also part of market analysis. Now I'm going to click through and bring the uh, warehouse up. And I'm going to move up to my top-down scorecard views for HGSI index analysis and click on the first one. And make sure that I'm sorted on raw combo. And you can see that there's only five groups up today out of the 175. So it's a really weak market day. Now, on other days, uh, when you're looking for the breadth as far as uh, advancers versus decliners, uh, if you go down to this same top-down scorecard views for HGSI index analysis, you can click on indexes, indexes up and indexes down. But with only five indexes up, it's easy to spot uh, what, uh, what is working today and what's not working. Now... I'm going to, I should have left this warehouse up because I want to go into these scans right here. It's folder number two. This is something that I came up with, oh, I don't know, six or eight months ago. Uh, Gil Morales was uh, always talking about undercut and rally stocks or candidates. So I thought, uh, well, I'm going to give it a shot, see what I can come up with and see how it works. I'm going to hit my alternate space bar. And what that does is it opens this window and changes from the indexes to all securities. 
alternate space bar. And then I'm just going to click on the first one here. Notice that inside the folder there are some berry scans, but I'm going to concentrate on the bullish scans today, even though it's a weak market day, because most of the interest in HCSI and most of my trades are long side trades. So uh, it says UNR, VPA, flags or candles, fan up, end of day, the three below the six. What does that mean? Well, let's take a look at this filter. And it means that if any of these VPA flags occur, occur notice the if and the or statements, or if any of these bullish candles appear, then the stock is going to pass through the filter. These have to trade a half million shares a day based on the 90-day moving average. They have to be in a group. The On this particular scan, the three-day exponential moving average is below the six. The fan is in an uptrend, and it's a common stock. So what does all this mean? Well, I'm going to uh, show you, and, and the chart or charts that I'll be using are in folder number five, undercut and rally, and visual filter backtest charts, because these markings on here are visual filter backtests. In other words, when the conditions are true, there's going to be green lines drawn on this chart. So let me make this full screen and show you what's available here. I have just a plain chart without any other information. Here's an end of day with end of day statistics. This has intraday statistics right over here. And then here's a bearish uh, chart, which I'm not going to use here. I'm, gonna, I'm going to uh, actually I want to stay on this intraday chart. And it tells me uh, the intraday information of the stock, stock that I'm looking at. Now this particular stock here is Lennar Corporation. It's in the home builders. You can see I put that information up here. The group rank is 96. Here's the sector and the number of stocks that are in this group. This line represents a group. And remember I just updated the groups a few minutes ago and you can see yesterday the group was up and today it's down. Now the light green bars means they mean that the three is below the six and you can see that happened right here the crossover which corresponds with the histogram down here which is the three and the six crossover this chart of Lennar let's just uh, go ahead and uh, take a closer look at this you can see that uh, there are light green lines. What that means is that one of those, either the VPA signal, the bullish VPA signal, or a bullish candle has occurred, and that means there's accumulation going on. So here, there were two VPA flags, low volume test and no supply. This is, I believe, strength seen returning. And the three is still below the six. You can see that it hasn't come above it, but when the three does go above the six, this turns dark green and I allowed for a two bar window. In case you miss the crossover the first day, it'll still appear the second day. Now notice that on this crossover, you really can't see it here, but it has to be slightly above the histogram. But you can see it's barely above the, uh, the uh, six is barely above the three here. But one thing I want you to notice is that when you're going to get a decent move, usually the group is starting to move up too. So we had a crossover here. 
The histogram is building as the stock moves up, as the three and the six grow apart, and then they start coming back together again here. You can see the three turn down, and at the same time, the histogram is turning down. It doesn't mean it's going to continue down, but this move up here, where it gapped open here, failed to hold the high and close near the low, that shows you that that's a shakeout or some short-term profit taking. But it was enough for the three to go down through the six. You can see it right here. And then we started accumulation all over again with both a bullish candle and a test for supply. Test for supply in an uptrend is a very strong signal. You can see there was another one here, another one here. It just means that the stock traded down but closed near the high on low volume. If I go straight down, you can see the volumes. I went too far. Sorry about that. The volume is, I meant to stop here. I got confused. The volume is low. Let's go back to this one. You can see the volume is low, but it closes near its high. Volume is low, but it closes near its high. This is one of the strongest signals that there is in VPA because it means that uh, whenever it's trying to be sold off, there are strong hands, buyers stepping in. Now back here, what happened? On this test, the three crossed above the six and it moved up and it had a nice run. Then here's an exhaustion gap here. I'm sorry, right here. But as it went up, you can see that it closed down some from the high. If I draw a line straight down here, you can see that's high volume. This is a FOMO or fear of missing out after it's made a nice run. It has that big gap up and uh, th you never want to chase them like this. I mean, just just let them go. You want to you want to find them when they're under accumulation or a little pullback like this. And then what happens? It doesn't pull back a tremendous amount. Well, it comes down from about 108 down to 102. And then we start seeing accumulation again. And what do we see? A low volume test. This is a confirmation of this test. It moves up, but it fails. Notice when it fails. The volume, I'm sorry, the group is going down at the same time. So you can see how important groups are to a stock. Now what do we have here? We have a uh, one, two, um, well there's two VPA signals here, but you can see this is a bullish candle. Here's a spinning top. Even though this is down, it's accumulation. Why? Because it opens here and it's a white body. Uh, this is a black body, but it's higher than the, the white body. and it's under accumulation through these green areas. We do get a gap down, but then we get a another VPA flag. I believe this is strength seen returning. And then no supply. And this is the confirmation of the strength seen returning. It hasn't gone up much yet, but you can see that the three is above the six. The best way to tell is by looking at this histogram. This down here is volume point of control. It means that the bulls are more in control than the bears are when it's green. And when it's rose, it means the bears are more in control. I'm going to uh, get rid of those drawings and let's go back. I'll check, click on this and you can see that it is a strength seen returning after a downtrend. This square. And this one is a strength seen returning after a downtrend also, but high volume adds to strength. There's a lot of these VPA flags. Uh, occasionally I forget what they all are for, but uh, all you have to do is click on the bar and it'll tell you what they're for. Now another part of this requirement was that the fan is up. The fan, uh, they have to be stacked in this order. The 200 is here, the 100 is here, the 50 is here and the 18 is here. The 3 and 6 don't to figure into the fan. So when they're stacked in that order, that means the fan is up and that's part of the requirement. Now when you're 
uh, looking for these swing trades, I think it's always better to look for stocks where the fan is up. Why? Because it means the stock is in an uptrend. I'm going to zoom out on this. Uh, and you can see where this stock has come from down here around the $70 area. There have been several buying opportunities. They all didn't work out immediately, but they did work out. Now we had a pretty good cup right here. And it, it is forming somewhat of a handle here. But this is today's price. And it's down a little bit. Still, this is a pretty strong stock if this market holds together. Now I want to show you this chart with a couple of the leaders. NVIDIA is probably the leading stock in the market right now. And you can see how this works. You don't want to be, you could be buying down here, especially if you're buying spreads or something where price isn't that critical and you give yourself some time for it to mature. But you can see there are multiple instances here of accumulation, strength seen returning, an up bar. Con this confirms the return of strength. This strength seen returning, no supply. And then a white candle here. No VPA flag, but a white candle, so it's an accumulation bar. And then here's the crossover bar. I'll put the crosshair on, and you can see that it went positive. Here's the two-day window, and after that, it really didn't look back on this nice run up here until it crossed down here. Here was a gap up. I believe this was on earnings. It didn't do much after that, but it, it mostly stayed... The three mostly stayed above the six. And here is a negative. This is no demand, a sign of weakness. And then here's a low volume test. And here's a confirmation of that test. Started moving up. And then the market got weak here. There's a down VPA. High volume down bar after an up move indicates weakness. Came down here, rested on the 18. And what do we have? We have an accumulation bar here. And then it gapped up and it uh, has been moving up ever since. Also, don't forget about the group. Look how strong the group was up here. Group hasn't been doing much because this has been a choppy market. But during this run, the group was up sharply. Let's go back here and look, look at this. The group was up and down, but uh, NVIDIA was doing very well. Another thing I haven't pointed out are these blue bars here. These are what I call volume pocket pivots. It may not be in a, uh, a pocket like this right here. It would be a pocket pivots coming out of that. But when the blue bars are there, it means that volume has been higher over the past five or ten days than any negative volume during that time period. So you can see all the buying in NVIDIA all the way up here. And right here on the gap up and then just recently the past two days. Now this stock is so extended this is an e could be an evening star. Depends on how it uh, ends up today but you certainly don't want to chase it at this point. Let's do another stock. Let's uh, Microsoft has been on a tear. Let's take a look at Microsoft. You can see a, a lot of chop here and the fan was going down so it wouldn't have passed this anyway. Let's now I do have scans uh, that don't require the fan and I'll show that to you. And uh, uh, with this choppiness here, you can see that uh, it's been very volatile. This is obviously an institutional stock uh, that uh, uh, traders and institutions are in and out of all the time. But let's uh, uh, look at some of these. I'll bring the arrow up. Here was accumulation. You can see that. This is strength seen returning. Uh, this is no demand but it was a white candle, so it still shows up as accumulation. Here's a crossover, went for a few days, and then a negative VPA flag. 
and then we went right back into a crossover. You can see the chop here. And then it had a nice run here. During that nice run, it looks like the group is mostly moving up. And then over at this point, behind my uh, warehouse uh, main menu, the group came down. You can see that. And the stock came down. And then what happened? It went into what a reaccumulation phase and chopped around in here. It didn't cross over until right here. And then it was only good for a couple of days. And then there was no demand again. No demand. Looks like the group is going down. And then the group turned around. Here was a big or a long accumulation bar. And then a crossover on the gap up. Uh, that was Monday of this week. And it uh, has had two efforts to rise. And today it may be running out of gas. Just like NVIDIA may be. I say may be because... I don't know. It depends. It all depends on the market. If this market uh, continues to weaken, uh, I would say that's been a pretty good run and there's going to be profit taking. Now look at all the the uh, pocket pivots here. Look at the demand that came in here. Tremendous demand. It's been spotty back here up and down. But when you see a few days in a row like this and the uh, volume bars keep going up. That is serious accumulation on a stock. Okay, let's uh, let's see. The opening price on this was two fifty six fifty three. If you look down in the corner, and where is it currently trading? Two seventy nine ten approximately. So you know that's a big run in a few days. And uh, there was a lot of money chasing this stock. If you manage your risk well, this is, this is an excellent way to look for stocks. Now I want to point these out. This is three under the six. And the next one is the same thing, same filter. Notice there are 198 stocks in here. And this is the intraday version. It's sorted on raw combo. 100, the same 198 stocks, and you can see that uh, there's some that are up, but not many. If I sort on this, out of those 198, only 16 are positive, and very few of them are trading near their high. Here's one that is Nerd Wallet. So if I look at Nerd Wallet, you can see that it had a Nice run. The group was flat. So this is outperforming the group, it looks like. And it came down. A lot of fear came into it. You can see the crescendo here of the volume. And then there was a big spike down here. And accumulation set in. And it's setting up again. The three is a long way from crossing. But this one should really go on a watch list for next week. Quick add to group. I have a watch list. Uh, I don't have a watch list set up for today. So let's do one. New 20, I'll click OK. Now that that's uh, added, I'm going to go back to the warehouse and I'm going to explain some of these other ones. Now, number two. So the first two are just the three under the six. Uh, end of day and intraday. Uh, this is the three above the six. End of day and intraday. This requires a fan up also. So you can see a lot of green here yesterday, but today you can see a lot of red. It just shows you the influence of the market on stocks. There's 57 stocks in here, and only nine of them are positive, and one is barely positive. This one here is trading at 100% today. Let's look at it. You can see the crossover yesterday. 
right here. Hard to see, but it did cross over. And here's the follow through for the two day window. Look at this. There were three accumulation days before the crossover. And the fan is up. Here's the 200, 150, and the 18. The brown line. Okay, let's go back to the warehouse. And these require fans. Notice that three and four do not require fans. So the three is under the six, no fan required yesterday. And there were a ton of stocks. Let me make sure this filter is engaged. Wow, there's over 2,200 stocks showing up uh, with this one. Let's just take a look at uh, one of these. And you can see that it, the three is well below the six, but there's accumulation. Let's drop down here and just look randomly. Yeah, see, the fan is not in place, but there's accumulation. But these are in a downtrend. You really have to be careful if you're looking at these. Yes, there's accumulation. Okay, back to the warehouse and my quick pick and let's go to the intraday. You can see there's 2,276 stocks here. Sort on raw combo and you can see a lot of green here. Till we get down here. These are all stocks that were showing signs of accumulation yesterday, but the fan was not a factor. A lot of them are in a downtrend, if not all of them. So let's just look through a few of them. There's a $2 stock. I just, this just takes me down. You can see accumulation. I mean, if you're bottom fishing, but if you're bottom fishing, you probably better look for stocks that, uh, uh, are crossing or at least the intermediate term or the group is starting to go up. I usually just look at the swing trades with uh, stocks um, that have an up fan. But then you miss stocks like NVIDIA and so on when they're starting to go. But we can switch universes. We don't have to stick with all securities. Uh, in fact, let me finish this one out and then... Uh, show you that number four is just like number three except the three is crossing the six. I mean it's like it because there's no fan required. But there was several stocks yesterday where the three crossed the six with a two-day window and you can see it in the warehouse. I didn't point this out before but these columns right here this is the days since the crossover. This is the days down since the crossover days since the volume point of control turned positive. And if I go back to number three, three below the six, this tells me the number of days since the three crossed down. So these cross, these were crossing down, but the volume point of control turned positive yesterday. Let's just look at Progressive Corporation. You can see that it was accumulation yesterday, not a crossover, had a big candle, volume point of control was positive, but because of the weak market today, it, it didn't get anywhere, and there's a big black candle today now. You can see that the fan is in place here. It's in an uptrend. Okay, this one here, no fan required, 434, the three crossing the six. Let's see what these are doing today. And you can find stocks here where the three is crossing the six. And the fan is not in an uptrend. And look at this. Big move up. VPA flags. There was no accumulation for several days. This had to be news yesterday. ACI Worldwide. I think FedEx reported and had good earnings. And Oh, this is infrastructure software. I was thinking something else. But you can see it followed through. So you don't necessarily have to have a fan up in place 
because you can still find these stocks. There is a lot of accumulation going on here, but this is why you don't want to just jump in on some of these uh, until it's more definitive with the three crossing the six. I Now, I will take trades sometimes on a stock, uh, but I usually do it with a debit spread, so I have, give myself 30 days for it to work out. Okay, let's go back. Now, I said you're going to miss out on stocks like NVIDIA and so on because the fan wasn't up when they took off. So this is where you can really limit what you're looking at. And I'm just going to go into, you can go into the sectors if you want to go to the tech sector or if you want to make sure that you're trading uh, stocks that uh, have a lot of activity, just go into the NASDAQ 100 and then you can really cut down on the number of stocks you're looking at. Uh, these uh, three crossed the six yesterday, but very few of them are following through. Adobe is following through. Now let's look at Adobe. You can see there were two accumulation days here. Earnings came out yesterday. It gapped up and it's trying to go higher, but notice the fan is not in place. So to locate these stocks, you have to use setups. I'm looking, I need to get to the warehouse. You have to use three and four. If you want stocks where the fan is going up, use these are accumulation and these are crossovers. Let's go back to this one. No fan required on the crossover. See what else is in here. Let's just sort on intraday range. Here's one that's negative Comcast, but it's trading near the top of its daily range. I'll bring it up. You can see the crossover. Here's accumulation. Out of four days here, there was accumulation. This was actually, uh, there was buying in there too. You can see it with a lower wick. And then here is a strong accumulation move. Here's a crossover here. It pulled back, but it's trading near the high of the day today. So I think you get the idea. Just play with these, but if you want to swing trade, these are not a particularly good day because of the market. Let's, let's finish this off with a look at the market. And it looks like it really hasn't changed much uh, since I was in here before. Uh, what I, One thing uh, that I want to point out is I can quickly get a read on the internals. You can see on the NYSE there's uh, only 415 up and 2500 down or minus 2086. This is a 16 minute chart. The internals gap down and they got worse during the day. Now they're holding steady. This is a 78 minute chart. And this is the daily chart. Here's where the internals opened and here where they are, where it currently is. Now this is the NASDAQ itself, but I have the internals in here for this too. Pretty much the same picture. Just an overall weekday. It's hard to find stocks that are moving up. I see coins moving up uh, because Bitcoin is moving up. Uh, don't ask me why, but uh, it's at a multi-month high now, I believe. Let's just take a quick look at it. Here it is right here. You can see that it's broken past resistance, uh, and it's got an effort to rise on and out. There is volume coming into it, so it's in demand now. Uh, we'll see how long it lasts, but coin is moving up in sympathy with that. Uh, talk about uh, a dangerous product to change. It, uh, you can see these are one and two lots. And the reason is they're $27,000 per contract. Okay, that's it. I don't want this to get any longer. I thought I would close it out with taking a look at the market. Uh, it's very, very hard to predict where this market's going to go. Uh, it wants to go up. The techs want to go up. Video. You can see it's a doji star at this point. 
heavy volume. So that means there's sell, both buying and selling. If it's a doji star, look at the upper wick. You can tell that. How about AMD? A little bit stronger. This candle's a little bit stronger. Volume's not quite as heavy on it. One more. Microsoft. Uh, you can see selling into this. Uh, you just don't want to chase these once they get extended because you can get caught. Clear up at 28333. It's currently at 27786. So those who chased are now underwater. Thank you for listening. Have a good week. And uh, once again, I'm still trying to commit to doing a webinar series where we can get into depth on things like uh, the undercut techniques that are available in HGSI.